When you've been in the orc killing business as long as I have, you learn some important lessons. You can call a minion many things, but dead is the best one. We're catching up with Robot Entertainment here at PAX East, and I gotta say, this is one of the more impressive stands of the entire show. Thank you, thank you. Can, can you tell us a little bit first, what, what, what's going on behind us here? So we have two games right now. There are two 5v5 games of Orcs Must Die Unchained going on right now. This is playing all with uh, all with fans of the game or all with people that wanted to see it here at PAX. And we have a couple of people that we're starting to train up on doing actually kind of a commentary on the games while people are playing. What, what's the status of the game right now? What, what's going on with it? We've been in uh, alpha and then closed beta for quite a time now. And uh, we went a few months ago and there were some very big changes that we wanted to make to the game. So we left the game up for people that wanted to uh, that wanted to continue playing. We left the servers running, but we hadn't been updating or patching that for quite some time. And uh, we were patching previously. I mean, for a time there, it was every week. Then it was every other week. Then we started to do it kind of monthly. And, we had to do a lot of like maintenance and making sure the balance stuff was getting fixed, and we decided we wanted to spend a little bit of time getting some, some bigger things fixed with the game and improved on the game. So we took about three months now that we've been cranking on that, actually a little bit longer. And uh, on the 24th, we're going to go update it for the first time since, uh, since the last time. So everybody that's out there now or the people that have been playing, we're going to start getting those guys back in there and let them see the new version of the, of the game. Tell us, uh, what are those big changes that you felt you wanted to do? Well, we have a set of patch notes right now that are about 60 pages long, so there's quite a bit of stuff that we've changed. There's, there's not a whole lot with the core game that we haven't changed. Uh, some of the things that we wanted to change there were actually making some of the um, getting into the game and the learning and the tutorials. We wanted to make some of that easier. Unfortunately, we had to spend a lot of our time getting the core game improved and we haven't had the ability to get that stuff as, uh, as far along as we like so that's going to happen next but i think we've redone entirely our combat system we've redone most of the core gameplay a lot of the stuff that people saw in the in the uh the earlier versions of the alpha and beta is still the same it's still you know you're building traps you're still setting defenses you're still playing offense and defense you're still trying to break into the enemy's fortress they're still heroes they still have abilities all those things but all of it has kind of changed in one way or another the, the game economy has changed how your abilities, the speed, uh, your ability to hit things in combat, a lot of the pieces that are there have been improved in, remark in dramatic ways. I guess, I guess that's the benefit of, of developing a game, the way you're developing this game, with sort of people playing it all the time and sort of yeah. seeing how it sort of evolves in the wild. We've been really, really fortunate. Um, we decided to do that early on. And uh, to be honest, we probably went out a little bit too early. But if I have to choose between too early and too late, I'll, I'll take too early. Um, so we did. We went out with a very early version of the game and started getting feedback right away. Um, we have a group of players that are really dedicated to robot and really dedicated to the, to the game. And just being able to float things out there, ask questions or talk to those guys or have them play and see what's going on in the game, it's, uh, it's benefited us dramatically. It's really kind of cool because this is, uh, there's a bunch of them here at the show, and these are guys that you know, I talk to every week and I, we play the game with, and they're here at the show. You finally get to meet some of them. If you're around at 5.30, actually, they're going to come and they're going to play a game against the devs. They're going to try to, they're gonna, we're going to have a good like, uh, devs versus uh, fans game here later today. So. Scary. I guess, I guess you got to defend, uh, defend your honor then. It's a, it's a little unfair because we've been playtesting the new version of the game for, you know, we have a couple hundred oh, games. Oh, you skewed the game a little bit in your favor. Uh, maybe, maybe. We'll play, on the, we'll play on the one machine that's having some trouble. But, yeah, it's, we're, we're a little bit more experienced with it than they are right now. Uh, what do you see ahead for this game? What, what, what is it that you sort of feel, oh, what, what's left to do? What's left to sort of work on? <laughs> so we're calling what we did right now is uh, our phase two. We already have a phase three lined up. Um, the thing that's nice about this game, we really consider this more of a platform for Orcs Must Die than we consider it a game. So this isn't something where we get done and it goes in a box and it's out the door. This is where Orcs Must Die is going to live from here on out. So we're working on the 5v5 player versus player game right now. We're also working on single player content for the game right now. And uh, when that gets done, it's going to show up in the same place. You're going to access it there. It's going to use kind of the same systems. So we have a lot of game modes to do. We, have, uh, we did have about 16 heroes before. With some of the changes, and we have plans to, to continuously do more and more heroes. Um, we only have 10 of them in the game right now. With the changes we made, we were only able to scale up 10 of them to make the, the new model. 
So we have to get those other six working. We have to get the new heroes in place. And the things that I was talking to you about earlier, uh, all the supporting stuff, we need to have stuff in there for our for the social, for people to talk to one another and have friends lists and leaderboards and the tournament mode. Um, and honestly, you know, games like this, we try to make it as simple as we can make it, but you want to have some depth. So there is some, some complexity in there. There is, a, there is some learning curve. We want to make it as easy as possible for people to learn the game and have fun learning the game and not just be thrown into the to the mix right off the bat and be confused and have a bad. And honestly, our, our current beta and our early alpha was really like, good luck. You know, see if you can figure this out because it's, it's hard, right? So we're gonna we need to do that work and get that improved as we go. I I noticed you have a, a board game coming here as yep. well. Uh, what what are your plans for this franchise? Do you plan to expand it on on consoles as well with with well, this? Or? I believe we've already made the announcement about our about the console plans. So we have a PS4 version that's also being worked on. the The board game is a lot of the people that are at Robot or X Ensemble Studios, Age of Empires uh, devs. So it's a, there's a bunch of old guys there. We do have some new blood mixed in there, but there's a lot of people that have been around for a while. So the board game is actually coming from Sandy Peterson, or at least the, the design group that's working on it, who was with us at Ensemble Studios and now has his own game company. Um, so he's working on the board game for us, although he does come into our studio. We all sit around and play test the game, and um, he's been doing that for a little while now. So we're excited about being able to do that. Um, we just really love the franchise. We love the IP. We like Orcs Must Die and uh, anything that we can do to do, you know, comic books or T-shirts or anything we can do, like just because it's a cool kind of IP for us and we like that world. And how do you feel then that that uh, if if you, how does it marry with uh, with the with PS4? I mean, from the looks of it, it feels like. Yeah, this, this should be a good console game as well. Yeah, our, uh, our previous games were, uh, we actually had it on the, the uh, Xbox before, so we have a little bit of experience getting the, those things to work on a console. We already have this working on console control, so you can play it with a D-pad and see how the game feels. And that action component of the game feels pretty good with a D-pad and a, and a controller, so it, it marries to it pretty naturally, right? There are things with resolution and performance and networking that you have to fix. And menus are a little bit different, right? So it's just a, it's a UI challenge to fix some of those things, but the core controls are, are pretty good for for D-pad. So uh, I guess when you got a hybrid like this, you're gonna have single player, multiplayer, a lot of a lot of these five v five games are of course free to play. What, how do you sort of tackle the, the business side of things? Have you have you began thinking about that? Oh, yeah, we we so that you know it's it's just like everything else in our game, right? Uh, we actually redid the entire business model during this during this break as well. Um, we had started off with a collectible card game inspired model for it, and as more and more people were playing our game and started to play in a more competitive fashion, we got more feedback from our players that, you know, it, it kind of sucks to hear about a build or to think about a new build and not be able to test it because you have to count on the randomness of opening a pack and getting the things you need for it. Um, so we revised that actually, and we have a model now where it's just kind of straight up. Everything except for vanity in the game can be purchased with skulls. You earn skulls for playing the game. So someone can say, I want this trap, I want this hero, I want this whatever, and they can try to, they can play enough games to go and purchase the thing that they want. Um, we also, there's a chance, um, depending on how well you do in games, the chance goes up that we drop chests at the end of games sometimes as a, as a random reward. And inside some of those, there are full-on traps, there are, there are heroes. So people can get lucky and get some of those things, or they can go and earn them by playing, or they can buy chests and try to get them that way, right? Um, but everything in there for a free player or for a paid player, they can get, or uh, sorry, for a free player can get everything that a paid player can get with the exception of the vanity stuff. So you can earn everything in there for free. And the same with single player? Yeah, for the stuff we would do on single player, we don't, we're not selling anything specifically for single player right now. Um, but if we do that, I'm sure we'll adhere to the same to the same model. Right? That's I don't see why we wouldn't. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, man. The most important thing of important things, though, the rift is still safe. Thanks to me, Warman. Oh, and these other guys too. They help. Totally help. You.